I saw a very in, uh, interesting image when I shuffled out the spread. So um, I see this little town. It's like, well, a village. Um, it, it, it's, it's a very, very small village and it's nighttime. And there's like a, like a pond or like a bog or something nearby. And then it's a full moon. It's a, you know, a, a dark night. And you have all of these spirits coming out of the pond, invading the, the village. There, some of them are encircling the village. Some of them are coming in. And then the people in the village, they're aware of it. and They're getting really scared. They're just like, oh no, what's happening? Are they going to harm us? Are they going to, you know, kidnap our kids? Like they're really scared. And the spirits look, they're, they're dark, they're black, they're human shaped. Um, and so, and then there's this little boy, he's probably like four or five, maybe a little bit older, maybe like six or seven when children are a little bit more aware and he's like, he's uh he's afraid of them of course but he's like i'm gonna find a way to um kind of lead them away from our village so he got a lantern lights it up walks out into the um i guess like the 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 center of the village and then all the spirits are really drawn to the light of the lantern that he's carrying and so he just walks them back towards the road, back into the, the river or the, the, the pond that's in front of him. And then they all went back into the water and he leaves the lantern there. So they're drawn to the light. Okay, they're drawn to the light and they're quite obedient. They just follow the light and he's aware of that. So then he just um, left it there. So that's the, the image that I saw. It's quite interesting. So... Going along with that image, I feel what's really happening for you guys the um, rest of February is you're being called to do some type of damage control. You're being called to either diffuse a situation, resolve a situation, or to, you know, fix something for everybody else, okay? And I feel like there is a sense of like courageousness that's also required of you, but also creative problem solving. Okay, doing something, thinking outside the box, doing something to uh, resolve a situation the only way that an Aquarius can do. Because I feel like, you know, for a fire sign, for example, um, they'll be like, okay, let's fight the spirits, but the spirits are translucent. It's, it's, it's a losing battle. And then other signs might say like, oh, you know, like an earth sign, let's vacate the village. Let's go somewhere safe and let's be away from here and then come back in the morning. And I feel like for you guys as air signs, the best thing to do because you guys are so intelligent is to take the route that's easiest, but has the most effective solution. So I definitely see many of you stepping up, stepping into the limelight and to be able to help others overcome. And I, I don't feel like you're just helping one person. I feel like you're helping a group of people. Um, it, it's, it's almost like de-escalating a situation or appeasing a situation or even... Uh, redirecting attention from one thing into another situation. So like redirecting attention and, you know, like this is a hot spot here. We don't want to focus on that. So let's uh, create a diversion to draw attention away from that thing and redirect that attention elsewhere. So I definitely feel like you are very solution oriented and you're very much about stepping up taking charge of a situation, grabbing the bulls by the horns, even though you might be nervous, even though you're apprehensive, even though, you know, you're not really sure about your capabilities, but you know it's the right thing to do and you know it's going to ben benefit everybody as a whole. So you're going to go ahead with it despite your fears and despite your hesitation. So because of this energy that's coming through, I feel like 
the reading was um, the when I shuffled the cards, I felt very, very tense. And I felt like the situation, it's, it seems like, you know, the choices are very important this month. And it also feels like the energy around you is very, very tense. And it also feels like every decision that is made um, needs to be thoroughly thought out. But you don't really have the benefit of time on your side. So you kind of really need to trust your gut instincts and go with it rather than doubt yourself. Okay, trust your gut instincts, trust your intuition and to be able to make decisions on the fly, like on the spot, because you trust your intuition. All right. So sometimes things that come to us, they don't really make sense completely, but there's something about it that that you feel compelled to do it. And that compulsion, it is your spirit guide nudging you in the right direction. It is also your intuition. It is also your gut instincts, whatever you want to call it. I do feel oftentimes when we are nudged to do something, um, it's divine intervention and it's also your, our spiritual guidance. Okay. So um, let's talk about some of the things that are coming through. We have an earth sign here and usually when I see the page, this is the princess of pentacles or the page of pentacles. Usually when I see a page, I don't think of it as a person. It's more like, you know, messages, delivery and things like that. But this is definitely coming out as a person. So you have an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, and I feel almost like this is a person that's very, very hard to please. Okay, very hard to please. And um, earth signs in general, they, um, they're hard on themselves. They're hard on themselves. They have high expectations of themselves. They're a little bit perfectionistic. And um, whenever they, they fail at something, whenever they, um, they, they, whenever they, um, they make mistakes, they're very, very, very hard on themselves. And I also feel like, you know, this is somebody that doesn't give compliments easily. This is also somebody that is, um, you know, they're, they're not a suck up. They don't, you know, give compl compliments freely. They don't, um, they don't give of themselves freely. They give of themselves to others that deserve it. And they give of themselves to people that they love. So I feel like this is somebody that's really holding back. I also feel as well, compliments are really hard to come by with this person. So like I'm getting it so strongly, I feel like I just need to repeat that. And then, so where does this person fit into, you know, your energy? Um, this is your energy, Aquarius, six of wands. You are very, very re well regarded in your environment, okay? So I feel like people take you very seriously. People come to you for advice. People see all the good work that you're doing. There is definitely some type of a major breakthrough or some type of a major escalation when it comes to your reputation, okay? And so if you're, you haven't been sure about like, Am I doing, you know, my job well or how do other people see me, especially if you're in a new environment? Like, does my supervisor like me? Do my coworkers like me? Especially if you are also thinking about leaving the work environment and you're just like, am I going to get a good letter of recommendation? Am I going to be recommended for further opportunities? You're in a position where you are highly, highly re regarded and a lot of people look up to you. Um, they won't say it. They won't say that, you know, um, you're great. You're amazing. I want to be like you. They're not going to do that. And the reason why they don't do that is because you guys are very aloof as well. And so I feel like other people find it hard to tell you you're amazing. I want to be just like you. I wish I were smart like you. So they're not going to tell you that because they feel like you already know that. But I feel that you guys don't already know this. I feel like you have been dealing with quite a bit of self-doubt the past two months. Am I capable? Am I good enough? Am I attractive enough? Um, 
you know, like body image issues, competency issues, self-confidence, you have dealt with your fair share of it within the past two months. And I feel like this is coming, uh, moving away from that into this month in February. You have been shining really, really bright. You have been trying to um, kind of rebuild your reputation. Not that there's anything wrong with your reputation, but you've been taking yourself very, very seriously, doing things in a very serious manner to show others your capabilities, to show of others your commitment, to show others what you're willing to do, to show others your work ethics, your hard work, your determination, all of those things. And it's very well received, but I feel almost like there's one person in particular that you're trying to please, this earth sign right here, and you don't know how they think of you, how they see you, how they feel about you, okay? And I feel like you have done a lot of things to try to kind of like um, connect with this person. How do you feel about me? How do you think about me? What's going on with you? But I feel like they, they're holding back. It's almost like your light is too bright and they're not able to face it. You know how you stare at the sun and then it makes your you squint your eyes? It's too much. And it could be damaging too to your retinas, right? So I feel like that's that's what's happening. And in due time, they're going to show you, okay? In due time, they're going to show you that, yes, you're very special. Yes, you are, um, you know, great. You're amazing. But I, I just feel like for right now, they're kind of moving things away. So they're, they're kind of like not showing themselves or they're purposely trying not to let you know. Um, for some of you, they think you're a little bit arrogant. And I, I feel like, you know, it's that, um, that level of aloofness that makes them think this. And in due time, they're going to come around and see you in a different light. But I feel like this person in general, they are, you know, a little bit more on the critical end. They have really high expectations of everybody. They have high expectations for themselves and they have high and you know as a result they have high expectations for everybody so they don't dish out compliments easily they don't say things that they don't mean and they're not ones to shower you with compliments and affection and you know really um corny displays of um just terms of endearment or affection okay so it's going to take some time but it's going to work itself out because if you're coming in like this, Aquarius, really just, you know, on your A-game, taking care of things, being well regarded, then sooner or later they're going to they're gonna know it. And this is a very smart person. So I don't feel like, you know, they're, they're blind to it. I feel like they are aware of it. But they can't find the words to express to you that, yeah, you're pretty amazing, Aquarius. Um, so that's what I'm feeling here. And I feel for many of you, you have a good sense of, you know, your, your intuition is really strong. But this is a person that you're not able to read. You're not able to gauge their reaction. You're not able to understand them. You're not able to, to, it's like they're not an open book. Everybody else is an open book for you. But this person is a closed book. And, and... The thing about air signs in general is that you guys need to know. So whenever somebody is a closed book and is not readily accessible to you, you want to delve a little bit deeper. You take more interest in the unknown and the mysterious air that they have about them makes you want to pry a little bit deeper. So you want to be careful of that tendency to be uh, pursuing things only because you don't know and pursuing things not because you like it but because you feel like there's something hidden about it and then pursuing people not because you like them but because there might be an air of mystery about them 
So if this is a romantic partner, I feel like they're purposely keeping you in the dark, uh, in the dark to kind of string you along, revealing little bits and pieces of themselves because they want to keep you engaged and interested. It's almost like they know how you're, you work and they're trying to work you. Does that make sense? I don't feel like they're manipulative. I don't get that. But I feel like they're afraid that your interest is very um, fickle. And so they want to maintain the upper hand in the relationship by keeping themselves a little bit more at a distance as well so that you can remain interested in them. And then I also feel like I, I feel this element of smoke and mirrors with this person. So let me see what that's about. Give me one second. I don't feel this person is deceptive. Okay, I don't feel like they're deceptive. But I feel like the communication and the styles between the two of you might not jive well like you it's almost like you don't understand each other okay so it's like you know um so an example of this would be you look at like a piece of uh, abstract art and you're like okay that looks like a, a house and then the other person's all like no that looks nothing like a house it's a donkey so it's like that night and day, night and day. And that's what it is right here. Well, this night and day energy, okay? With the hermit and then the daytime. So I feel like you have trouble understanding where this person's coming from. And I almost feel like you want to understand them a little bit more, but they keep retreating. They're very, very elusive. And I honestly feel like this person is kind of afraid of your energy. It's not that they're shy or intimidated. I don't feel that way. But I almost feel like you're bringing in, into, in for them a lot of awareness that they're not ready to handle or they're not they're not ready to cope okay to cope with so for example you know how let's say you have a best friend right and you know best friends can be brutally honest with one another and you won't get mad at one another like you know your best friend so well that when she or he acts up you can call them out on it right you can tell them like stop being mean to your mom or stop being so defensive, I'm trying to give you good advice. Like you can say these really blunt things. We can say these really blunt things to the people that we love because the love is already established. So just imagine you're being very blunt to somebody when the love hasn't been established yet. So they, they see the things that you're saying as criticisms or as critiques of their personal um beliefs or even as a critique of them so i feel like that's what's happening there it's very smoke and mirrors with this person because they're very very afraid of uh, criticism from you and they don't really know how to approach you they also don't really know how to reveal more of themselves and that's why they there there's something like smoke and mirrors with this person so um i feel like for some of you this is a boss Somebody whose opinion of you matters a great deal to you. For others, this might be like a, a crush or relationship uh, partner who I feel like they look at you and they look at your capabilities and they look at your greatness and they don't feel like they have enough to give you. They don't feel like you being in a relationship with them is going to benefit you in any way. And so they're trying to better themselves to be on your level. And if this is somebody that doesn't really know how you feel about them, like you haven't told them, um, you know, how you feel about them or you're not in a relationship with them, they're just kind of floating around in, in so like you, you could be interested in them, but you haven't really told them how you feel about them. They almost feel like they're not your equal match. Okay. And then for others, um, I feel like there's an element here 
about you know having a lot of suitors in your you guys Aquarius have a lot of suitors in your environment but none of them like it, it's almost like the people that do like you they really really adore you but because it comes so easily it's not exciting it's not interesting okay so I, I feel like you're longing for the chase you're longing for a challenge you're longing for the one person that is aloof that is not revealing of themselves or you're longing for the other person it might have been like the one that got away but I, I just feel like <clears throat> there's an energy here about <clears throat> excuse me there's an energy here about having a lot of people who are interested in you but because it's so readily available and readily accessible that it doesn't really capture your interest and I can't even tell you you know like um, don't take it for granted or you know um, <clears throat> look at the people that's in front of you. I can't even tell you that because you know the heart wants what it wants And so I feel like some of you might be barking up the wrong tree when it comes to relationship partners because you're willing to wait on somebody that might not be ready or might not ever be willing to give you, you know, the whole nine yards. When in fact, there are a lot of people that are readily available to give you the whole nine yards. Okay, so I will leave it at that. Um... There are some issues, I feel, structural, structural issues. We have here the Ten of Pentacles. This is a housing card. And the Tower, which is also a housing card, okay? So let me talk about this. Um, I feel like there's going to be a lot of communication coming through regarding a housing situation. I see this, um, it's like a ping pong ball darting back and forth so I feel like it's communication back and forth regarding some type of a housing situation there could be structurally something wrong with it or there could just be like annoyances or irritation or things that are really getting in the way when it comes to your living arrangement or your living space for others of you this could be in an office environment where they're like doing construction they're remodeling and there's a lot of noise and it interferes with your concentration or there could be like um, internal reshuffling when it comes to the chain of command um, when it comes to who you have to report to your responsibilities like from one day to the next things just it's, it's like a, a major toss-up, like I'm seeing almost this salad, lettuce, tomatoes, and everything tossed in the air. And God knows where it's going to land. So it's like from one day to the next, uh, there's no stability. On the one hand, you guys really, really, really love unpredictable things. But on the other hand, um, you like to have things a certain way, and you also like to know what's going to happen it's all a matter of wanting to control things and i feel like this major toss-up or these things that are happening um it's forcing you to be very flexible okay and it's forcing you to kind of like roll with the punches and it's also forcing you as well to really need to be on your a game and to handle and navigate this energy and you guys are actually very very good at it you don't like it but you guys are very good at it and so the the moment you kind of relinquish control the better it's um it's gonna get you're gonna start to see it almost like instantaneously you know when things are kind of like chaotic and, and disorderly orderly around you just close your eyes and just take a deep breath and just say this is okay you know this is life please help me just uh, get through it and then you open your eyes and you're going to see things kind of like through a new lens. So 
I definitely see many of you coming in to be the, the person to fix a situation, to be a person to make decisions, like very firm, solid, uh, quick acting types of decision to resolve problems, to stabilize a situation. It's almost like you guys are the binding force, the glue or the toolkit or the even the first aid kit and you're doing a lot of damage control in your environment for other people okay um, so it is going to be a little bit just a little bit physically taxing I see you running around um, but I feel like mentally it's going to be more mentally taxing than it is physically taxing because you're going to make these decisions so fast and so swiftly that I don't even feel like you knew what you're capable of and you, you, or you are even aware of where the insights and the ability to problem solve, um, like where did it come from? You're not going to be able to know. And I'm telling you, you have some divine guidance that's coming through. It's your spirit guides trying to, um, Make the situation better for you. It's this, your spirit guide trying to show you how to be at the right place at the right time. Say the right things so that you're very well regarded by everybody around you. You're able to troubleshoot, problem solve for other people and do massive amounts of damage control. Okay. Um, there is a lot of things coming out in this reading, so I know it's going to run a little bit longer. Um, there is another image that I saw and let me just relay that to you. So I see this uh, train track It's oval. So it's a, like a toy train. It's it's like circular and so the train keeps going around and round and round and round in circle and then this little kid comes and he changes the tracks, okay? He adds like a, a an additional length of track and then he created like, you know more tracks so he connects it into a different shape. And so as soon as he does that, rather than going around and around and around in circle, the train, the train takes the new tracks and then it goes somewhere else. So I feel like that's the energy or that's how powerful your actions are going to be for this month, where you are rerouting that energy into a different form. Okay you're able to show other people this is your card Aquarius pouring out the water of knowledge to the rest of the world okay it's like the water of life allowing a situation to thrive but also water of knowledge you're sharing your knowledge and your skills and your expertise so that people are not stuck in their rut in their patterns in cyclical behaviors or even karmic patterns so that they can say see a way out so that they can see a way out and so you know with great powers come great responsibilities um, I don't see many, any of you uh, abusing this I don't see that I see that you're in a position where you really want to share with people you're looking at them almost like you you're looking at them not only as the person that they are right now, you're looking at everything that they've done in their past. You're looking at everything they're doing right now. You're looking at and even anticipating or, you know, being able to recognize what they're going to do in the future. And you're telling them, this isn't going to work. You need to do things a little bit differently. And you're going to show them a way out. You're going to show them a way to break these cycles. And then I also feel, you know, the train might be you as well for some of you, where we have patterns and, and ways of doing uh, rigidity and, you know, rigidity, like uh, wanting to control a situation, wanting things to be a specific way. And the energy is going to be very disruptive for, you know, the rest of February. And so it's really forcing you, Aquarius, be flexible. Roll with the punches. Don't try to control a situation. Don't try to figure out how everything is going to fit. It's going to fit because the greater design is that it's meant to fit. Okay, so don't cling on to situation and try to control things. Just be a little bit more free-flowing and go with the flow. 
money looks really, really good for you guys for this, uh, the rest of this month. What we have here is a major transition, the death card, and the ten of pentacles, okay? Financial abundance, stability as well, and followed up by your card, the wish card. I feel like for many of you, this is a, a really good indicator of karma, good karma coming back home to roost, okay? And the reason why I say that, I feel like many of you have found like a life hack. It's making you do things very efficiently. It's making you uh, do things like without a hitch, without problems. And what I have here is the Five of Swords refusing to do things in a dishonorable way and Aquarius and that is why your good karma is coming back home to roost so I see many of you working really really hard you could have taken an easy route to make a lot of money swindle people lie and cheat on people and you know kind of like like the used car salesman um tell people that you know they're getting a really really good car for a really cheap price and then they drive it off the lot and then it you know catches on fire it smokes out or it stops working or whatever it is you've had many opportunities in your lifetime to make a lot of money um, at the expense of you know your morality but you didn't do that you didn't do that many of you and I feel like this is a this is an Aquarian thing. You want work that is spiritually fulfilling, that is mentally challenging and intellectually stimulating. So as long as the work itself is interesting, mentally stimulating, um, or even, you know, beneficial in some way to the rest of the world, enhancing the livelihood of humanity, then you that's the, the type of job that you want to get involved in. So it's not so much about the money, it's more about, you know, the, um, it's more about like the ideals behind it, okay? And because of that, you don't do things out of, um, that, that would run counter to your sense of morality, your sense of what is right and what is wrong. And I feel like your ability to stick to that is really allowing you to find your way, to find your path, and especially find work that is really fulfilling. And because the work is in is fulfilling, and because you feel like it's in alignment with you, and because you have, you know, turned down opportunities that are morally not right, or morally against you, like it, it just didn't feel right, and you're just like, oh, I don't know. Uh, it, it doesn't feel like it's ethical there that's the word I'm looking for ethical as long as you feel like you're doing some good you're able to stick to the job and and I feel because of that because you have turned down things that are immoral or unethical you have some really good karma that's coming in to guide you and to help you I also feel for others this is a situation where I'd rather be alone than be in a relationship where it causes other people pain and heartache. Okay, and I definitely saw that energy coming in the beginning of the month where, you know, your the, the message was you feel that your happiness came at somebody else's expense and you're not willing to do that. And because you're able to acknowledge that and because you're able to turn away from temptation, you're also being very, very, uh, you're, you're being um, protected and you're being rewarded for this month. So there are lots of blessings coming through. It's not going to be an easy two weeks. There are a lot of disruptions. There's uh, a lot of like unforeseen circumstances. I feel like stop, go, stop, go. But just like that train, it's on a track. Everything that is there is meant to be. So even though the energy feels very disruptive, Aquarius, um, 
don't fear it. I feel like those, um, it, it's almost like those, those tracks need, need to be greased. Those tracks need to be maintained in order for things to flow smoothly. So it's like a, a, a process of growing pains. Things have to be co uncomfortable before they can get better. And I feel like everyone needs to deal with the discomfort so that someone will step up and fix the situation. And I feel like it's going to be you guys. Okay. 